As humans, we interpret the world through our senses. We hear sounds, we see images, videos, and text, sometimes layered on top of each other. We understand the world through the combination of all these modalities and, and the relationship between them. AI can do something similar through multimodal search. Hi, I'm Stefan, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to build a multimodal search application using the open source vector database Milvis. This application will allow us to combine modalities to improve our search by understanding the user's intent. And the best part, we'll be doing this using only open source tools and models. Let's get started. OK, let's get started on building our multimodal image search system. So this system will have three steps. It's quite similar to a RAG system. The first step, indexing, will take the data set that we want to search over. We'll put that through an embedding model to produce vectors. And then we'll store those vectors in a vector database. In the second step, the user comes along. They have a query. In our case, it will be both an image and an instruction. We'll embed those using the same model, pass them to the vector database, and perform a similarity search. That will return a number of candidates, which won't be perfect by themselves. We'll need to do a bit of additional processing on them. So we'll take the candidates, and in a generation step, we'll use a large language vision model to re-rank them. Our embedding model works like this. It'll be able to take an image plus text and embed that into a point that takes into account the, the meaning of both of them, as well as just an image or text separately. So for example, in this case, we've got a lion plus an instruction front view of this. And that will map to a very similar embedding as just a picture of a front view of a lion. So why is semantic search really cool and such a big advancement over purely lexical search? Well, it allows us to understand the, the relationship between uh, between phrases, words, images, in a way that you, you just can't do with lexical search. So in the, in the middle example, we can see that we have two different phrases, different, different ways of expressing the same thing. And semantic search will be able to connect the dots there. OK, let's move across to our notebook. So before we get started, I wanted to mention that we'll be using the following open source tools. We'll be using Hugging Face uh, models and datasets. We'll be using PyTorch. Um, we'll be using two open source embedding and large language vision models. And finally, the open source vector database, Milvis. So the first step is indexing. And to perform this indexing, we need to start off with a dataset. And in our case, we'll be using a data set called Amazon Reviews 2023. And this is a, um, a really large data set. We'll just be taking a small subset, 900 images from that. And these are images of Amazon products. So we'll be searching over Amazon products. So we, we download and we unzip the data set. Then we need to, we, uh, we need to obtain our embedding model. So we'll be um, using an embedding model called Visualized BGE. And at a high level, this works by converting patches of the images into visual tokens, and then combining these with the, the text tokens. So we download our uh, embedding model from Hugging Face. And then in the next cell, we, we open the model and load it into memory. And this, uh, this is just like a, a helper class to define some handy methods to help us encode image and text, or, or just image. OK, so we've got the data. We've got the embedding model. Now we need to embed the images themselves. And so in this cell, we loop over the images in the data set. And for each one, we run, we, uh, we run it through the embedding model and store that in a dictionary. So the next step is to actually put these into the vector database. And we'll be using the open source vector database Milvis. So we create a connection to our vector database by uh, opening this Milvis client object. And then we, so it's just an empty database at this point. We need to create what's called a, a collection. And a collection is a bit like a table in a relational database. So we create this collection, multimodal rag demo, and we also need to tell it the dimensionality of our vector embeddings. And so now we have the collection. We can perform the insertion of um, our vectors. 
And so uh, we've specified the data as a list of, um, of these dictionaries. And so each one is sort of like a row in a relational database. And it will have two fields, the image path, as well as the actual vector itself. OK, so we've done the indexing step. That's sort of like a, a step that you perform in advance when you're building your, your search or your RAG system. Uh, now we're on to the retrieval. Just imagine a user comes along, they want to perform a search. How are we, going to how are we actually going to sort of do the, the mechanics of that search? Well, let's take an example. So in our example, the query is it has an image of a leopard. So you can see a very um, uh, bit of a, a, a sad leopard looking leopard. <laughs> Um, as well as a text instruction. And in this case, we have phone case with this image theme. So you can, you can tell from that that the user wants to search for phone cases with um, like a, a pattern of a leopard skin. And somehow the search needs to be able to combine the image plus the text to search over our data set. So the first step is we need to, uh, we need to embed the query. And so uh, for that, we use the same model as we did for, for, the, for the documents. We take the, the query text, the query image, and we embed that into the query vector. And then we can perform a similarity search in this vector database with one line. And we pass it. So we want to return the image path name as well as the top nine matches. So once we uh, run that, it gives back a list of nine image file names. And so these are the images, so nine of the top matches from the 900 Amazon product images that, that we had. Um, but we want to like visualize them because just like text um, file names, it's not that easy to understand by itself. So we've got a helper method in the next function or the, um, the next cell that will, will turn those uh, results into a single image. So skipping over this code, which is not that important, we can go down to here. So, so the output of that is this single image that displays the retrieved results. And it has this grid three by three. So number one is the closest hit in our vector database, uh, number nine, the, the least closed. And this image in the lower left is the, the query image of, of the leopard. Um, so looking at these results, we can see that number seven seems like it's the right match to the user's query. That's a phone cover with a leopard skin pattern, which is what the user is searching for. But that wasn't the top hit in when we did the search on the Vecca database. So how are we going to fix this? Well, we can do an additional step known as re-ranking. And for this step, we'll use a large language vision model to perform some image understanding on the images and help change around the order so that hopefully this number seven will be swapped to the top match. OK, so we're on to the, the, the third part, which is sort of like the generation step in a RAG system, where we perform the re-ranking. So we need to load our large language vision model into memory. And I'm running a model locally. You could also use a service such as Amazon Bedrock to, to run some open source um, LLVNs. So we'll, uh, we'll open the model, load it into memory. And before we perform the re-ranking, we'll use the model to, to caption the query image. And then this text caption, we can pass that to the re-ranking prompt to give it a bit of um, extra sort of you know, help. So we uh, run this prompt through the large language vision model, asking it to caption the query image. And what it outputs is a close-up of a leopard's face with a focus on its spotted fur and green eyes. And if we go back to the image, that seems like a pretty appropriate caption for it. So now we construct the re-ranking prompt. And we have both the query instruction, a caption for the query image. And then separately, we pass in that single image, which has all of the retrieved candidates, as well as the query image. So we'll run that re-ranking prompt. And we've asked it to output in a specific format. So firstly, with a ranked list, which has the indices in brackets. And secondly, with a reason, an explanation. So we see that after it's re-ranked them, image number seven is now the top match, which is what we wanted. 
so we've been able to successfully perform a re-ranking. And visualizing the re-ranking, um, I've just um, sort of swapped around the order according to that output. And you can see that now the top hit is that image with the, the leopard skin pattern. And that's a wrap. Now, this is just your entry point. RAG, molecular search, recommender systems like amazon.com are all kinds of things you can build with multimodal search. If you want to build this yourself or something similar, instructions and the notebook are on the Zillit site. Check the description for details. Now, I know you're creative. What are some interesting ways you would use this? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to AWS Developers YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.